uh, design of the launching apron and all the components are over. How a weir gets failed? What are various causes of failure of a weir? So this table summarizes everything. So there are four different causes of failure. One is piping, then uplift, suction, and spout. So out of these four, first two, piping and uplift, they are caused by the subsurface flow. The water which is flowing through the pore structure of the soil or under the bed, that means inside the soil, uh, bed soil of the river, that flow is causing the failure. Uplift we have discussed in detail uh, as of now. So piping also is something that is uh, happening in the interior of the bed only. So to prevent this piping, we provide the uh, inverted filter also. So, and suction and scouring, they are caused by the water which is flowing on the upper side, that is the surface, which is flowing above this weir. So, first two causes are of subsurface flow type and further two causes are due to the surface flow. Okay. So, what are their effects? Due to piping, if it is initiated once, if piping failure is initiated once, if it gets started, it progresses very rapidly. Okay, and it is it cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. So once the piping failure is initiated, you see that the failure has started. The piping failure has just begun. It is very, very difficult to stop this progression of this failure. You cannot prevent the overall failure of the structure. Okay, so uh, I'm not discussing it in much detail over here because uplift pressure and piping, both of these things are to be discussed in the uh, seepage theory chapter. And we'll be designing our impervious floor on the basis of these two things. <laughs> okay. So what we can do to prevent this is by providing sufficiently long impervious floor. So it is related to the impervious floor with upstream and downstream sheet piles. Again, I told you that these sheet piles along with this impervious flow together, we'll be designing and studying it in the next chapter. For uh, uplift pressure, it, the impervious, impervious flow is lifted upwards, causing cracks. So this we have discussed today. And how to prevent it? By providing sufficiently long impervious flow. Again, sufficiently long impervious flow is good for a resistance against the piping also and it is good for resistance or you can say uh, effectiveness against the uplift pressure also. So here something is else is needed also by providing sufficiently long impervious floor with sufficient thickness at various points. So we have seen that impervious floor is uh, having uh, different thickness at different points. So sufficient thickness at various points should be provided and upstream and downstream sheet piles are also there. So all these things along with sufficiently thickness, sufficient thickness at various points. So that also is required uh, for uh, resistance against the uplift pressure. So in general, so these two failures can be resisted or can be prevented by designing this impervious floor properly. Okay, so that is of course the topic of the next chapter. In the suction, what happens is, uh, if you just imagine the water flowing from the spillway of a dam, from top of the dam, the water is sliding down. As it moves down, it slides down, its velocity keeps increasing. Okay, and all of us know that more the velocity, lesser will be the pressure. Okay. So the pressure inside that water will keep on reducing as its velocity keeps on increasing. So when the velocity increases to a, such a great extent that the pressure becomes lower than the atmospheric pressure, then in that particular case, the concrete structure or the floor or the uh, glaciers or the spillway on which the water is sliding the water will have a suction effect on that floor also and any loose aggregate or any portion, loose portion of the uh, floor or the concrete surface that will be sucked out. Okay. 
so concrete surface of the impervious floor or sloping glacis is worn out because of this suction effect of this high velocity water jets okay how to prevent it additional thickness of the floor is provided okay so whatever is the design thickness you have to provide more thickness than that so that some bearing out of the uh, surface can be accommodated and it can also be provided uh, the safety can be provided by the concrete floor of single mass instead of masonry layers if the uh, floor is provided in the form of masonry layers in that case the different layers have their different strength their strength will not be uniform throughout so different layers can be removed easily so suction will be more effective so that uh, floor will be damaged very soon so instead of providing the uh, masonry layers we can provide the single concrete floor as a single mass so these are the remedies for preventing suction uh, failure due to suction the last one is covering and you know what is covering the sediment on which the structure is built it is removed because of this covering and what is the effect further it causes the settlement and cracks in these structures you can very well uh, understand that if the subsoil is not there or if it has gone deeper then the structure cannot stand in air it will also settle down further and settling down will be different and in different portion of the structure so cracks may appear so they are called the differential settlement will be there so cracks due to differential settlement may appear in the structure that will cause the complete failure of the structure so upstream and downstream sheet piles should be deeper than the calculated cover level so that the soil below the structure is not removed out and by providing suitable length and thickness of the launching apron so we have discussed in the previous slides that how the launching apron functions and how it prevents uh the damage due to discovering that also we have seen so providing suitable length and thickness of the launching apron will also help against this covering for now hello everyone in this video we'll see about failure of wear on permeable foundation and accordingly how to prevent this failure that is what we will be seeing in this video so what is permeable foundation permeable foundation means if suppose this is the soil there is no pervious impervious structure so it allows the flow of water underneath the surface that is known as permeable foundation so if suppose this is the wear and there is head of water on the upstream which i am denoting by u bar s and there is downstream so this wear can fail due to two reasons one is subsurface flow and other is surface flow so what is subsurface flow subsurface flow is the flow of water underneath the ground surface so what happens is there is a differential head as you can see head on the upstream is large because wear blocks the water because of which there is head on the upstream and downstream there is not much head when the water does not flow through the wear when the gates are not open so because of the difference in head what happens is there is flow of water underneath the ground surface as you can see in the 3d image also there is flow of water underneath the ground surface that is known as seepage and that is subsurface flow so this failure of wear can happen due to subsurface flow also and also because of surface flow so when water flows over the wear there is hydraulic jump occurs which acts in the upward direction which tends to break away the foundation and also scouring of particles take place so failure can happen due to surface flow also now let us see the failure which happens due to subsurface flow so the first one is uplift failure so what is this uplift failure so as you can see there is a head of water on the upstream this head of water on the upstream if suppose these are the soil particles and if you insert a piezometer here you will find that the water rises up to the head of water so this head of water it applies force on this particles and tends to 
force the particle apart that is break away from each other so because of which there is a pressure developing so the water which is inside this pores of soil pressure develops inside this pores so this pore water pressure which happens because of this head of water it exerts uplift and it is uplift because as it tends to force the particle apart the contact force reduces between the particles so because of which the soil strength reduces which is which is acting which can be taken as it is acting upward so this pressure which develops as the water is inside the pores is known as pore water pressure so this pore water pressure contributes to the uplift so this uplift can be prevented by the floor weight if suppose this is the weir and you provide some flooring here with concrete or something so the weight of concrete will act downward and this is the uplift so if this weight of concrete concrete can balance this uplift then there is no problem and you know the head is maximum at the upstream and at the downstream head is less and also because of seepage the uplift pressure keeps on decreasing when there is seepage water flows from one upstream to downstream when water flows from upstream to downstream what happens is this head keeps on reducing the head of water at upstream and this is the head of water downstream it can be assumed to drop constantly as water seeps through so the pressure of water held by the whereas maximum and it keeps on decreasing so up will be maximum at the upstream so if this is the uplift pressure if it can be drawn like this so the uplift pressure is maximum at the upstream and very minimum at the downstream depending on the head of water so when there is no flow that is the most dangerous condition like when the weir is gates are closed there is maximum water on upstream and there is very minimum water on downstream so this is the dangerous condition for which the uplift failure is designed and also as you see from this image only on the upstream side there is uplift pressure and on the downstream side it is very less so it is yeah so uh, how to prevent this uplift so as you know as you saw when water seeps through the head of water keeps on decreasing so when you provide this seepage path to go vertically if you provide some sort of pile arrangement here so what happens is the water seeps through like this they cannot go directly so you allow the water to seep all the way along so when the depending on the length of this pile a lot of head is lost in this if head of water is reduced automatically pore water pressure is reduced because of which there is less uplift and also you should provide sufficient floor thickness to act downward to balance the uplift the next interesting part is known as piping or undermining failure so as we saw in the previous slides so water seeps through from upstream to downstream so when the water see seeps it what it does is it exerts it exerts some drag force on the soil so what happens is if this is the soil particle force acts tangentially towards it so there is a upward component of force in the downstream here it is acting this way but if you go towards the downstream and near the edge set there is a upward component of force let us call this f1 and this soil is submerged so there is a submerged weight of soil so when f1 this seepage force is greater than the submerged weight of soil what happens is the effective stress is zero so it creates some sort of quicksand condition and the soil is washed away so that is known as dislodging of soil 
So if the soil is washed away here, then the next particle gets affected. Slowly it keeps on getting washed away and there is a hole. Hole slowly propagates from downstream to upstream in backward direction. So this formation of connected voids, that is it keeps on forming voids which may go into a hollow kind of structure that is known as pipe. So that is why it is known as piping failure. So if there is a hollow, hollow part, obviously the structure will try to subside into this hollow part and because of which it fails. So that is known as piping failure. So how to prevent this piping failure? One is you can increase the seepage path. So at the exit there is less gradient. So that can be done with the help of downstream cutoff piles. So it has to go through. And also what you can do is you can provide something called inverted filter. So at the downstream if you provide inverted filter it is like you provide some drainage for the seepage water to escape so that it doesn't cause the soil particles to dislodge. So that is one way of preventing piping. So the main idea is to increase the seepage path length. So the next two things are due to surface flow. One is the rupture of flow due to suction caused by hydraulic jump. So when water goes, there is a hydraulic jump. When this hydraulic jump acts in the upward direction, in that direction of uplift pressure. So it adds to the uplift pressure. So sufficient floor thickness to be provided to prevent this. That is one. And another is scouring on upstream or downstream of the weir. So when water flows, and if the gates are open, what happens is here the particles are scoured. So soil erosion takes place. So that is very disadvantage and the weir will fear because of that. So what you do is you provide some something called launching aprons. So launching aprons is nothing but some loosely packed stones. So what happens is when scour forms, there is a gap which is starting to form and this stone starts settling in this gap and help preventing the scour. These stones settle in the scoured areas. So that is how you should prevent, you should be preventing scour. So for these conditions, the weir is designed and there are majorly two theories. One is Blix creep theory and another is coast loss theory. This is what we will be seeing in the next videos and we will also see about Lane's weighted creep theory which is a modification of Blix theory. Thanks guys for Thank you.